Buenos nachos, amigos, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Howl Juku, your gateway into the world of East Asian pop, pop culture. Pope culture? Pope culture. Pope? pope? Like orange juice? Yeah. I fucking love pulp and orange juice, man. Yeah. Good shit. Extra pulpy and shit. Uh, garden stand style. It's a grove stand, I mean, shit. Grove stand. Mm -hmm. All about the grove Sweet. stand. Uh, that street? being said, we're here to talk about East Asian pop culture, not orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I'm, I'm Peter Ray. I'm stuck in man. a corner. What am I supposed to do? I, I, I don't. I'm know. just stuck looking at a rock. I, know, I don't know. Game. All right, I'm Peter Rave. Your man with a plan. Yeah. Here with me, as always, is Brandon Cooper, aka King Kaz. Hey, How you doing, Kaz? what's up? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. We're here to talk about things and stuff in the world of East Asian pop culture. Uh, we start off every episode talking about what's yes. new, checking in what's caught our attention this week, uh, or in these past few days. Uh, Cass, what's new mm -hmm. with you? Um, uh, starting off is a song we, I think we talked about it last week, or we talked about it within the last couple of weeks. Um, but this song finally dropped. Uh, we both have been anticipating it, waiting for it to come out. Uh, and it is Hyuna. Uh, so she has this new mini album. Is it a mini album? Yeah, it's a mini album. All she's done, um, her, all her solo stuff is mini. Yeah, so it's a it's a few song mini album. This is kind of the first taste like the of it, more track, or less. We're yeah. getting uh, outside of the teasers that we've gotten. Uh, it's called uh, "Run and Run," and it it's uh, it's kind of a behind the scenes video. It looks like they're filming another video, but they like took footage from it and then made this video out of it. <laughs> I think this is like they, um, they're filming the teaser for the album, and yeah. then they they made that into like the music video for the intro track, which is weird because like they had already released they already released the video you know last we talked about it before the roll deep or you know the uh, for her kind of uh, title track, and that didn't end up any looking like anything like the teasers. And I guess they just kind of shot the footage just for the teasers, but you know we get a little behind the scenes yeah. of Hyanna looking uh, quite gorgeous, uh, wandering around LA <laughs> with way too much makeup. God bless. I I don't know. I definitely enjoyed it. I I really like Hyanna's solo stuff a lot. Um, I, I I get I did get into an argument the other day with somebody that she is one of the hottest. Uh, like she, she's just one of the most hottest and coolest like females in Korean pop. Yeah, like she's just so chill. Like she just looks like somebody you can hang out with and have fun. Yeah. So I, I love me some Hyuna. Uh, yeah. So anything Hyuna, I'm all about it. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, I love me some Hyuna. I, I, uh, yeah, is, we, I think we talked about uh, we talked about our thoughts on the, the title track, but yeah, it's always good to just at least look at Hyuna. For a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I actually, I, I thoroughly actually enjoy this song. It, it's not very long. No. <laughs> it really, yeah, it's really just the intro uh, track. But yeah. Yeah. Um, but I did kind of, I, I love hearing Hyanna's voice. Like, I, I love hearing her sing. I love hearing her on a track. Like, it's just a lot of fun. So, mm -hmm. um, Hyanna. All right. And next up, you have another song you stole from my list. I you have another song I still actually shit I was supposed to steal something else what whatever um <laughs> uh our girls or or my girls because I I think day and day I'm starting to fall, fall more in love with red velvet yeah um because I am definitely loving the switch in style from their their first couple of songs that we heard from them yeah till we got to like ice cream cake and then everything else from ice cream cake. Or, or everything else around when Ice Cream Cake came out. Because there's some other songs that came out uh, uh, b before that that I enjoyed as well. Yeah. But Ice Cream Cake, this, and I can't think of what the other song is from them. I uh. just really enjoy the style. And I really do feel like they're getting the, the better of the mix. Like, and like we said, we think uh, something got mixed up over there at SM and they started getting all the songs that were meant for FX. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, it's almost in a, in a scary sense. Like maybe they just know wh where where maybe they should be diverting the songs. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just uh, just on a uh, just on a ticking time clock kind of a sense. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, this song, this song, yeah, uh, this kind of has been on on repeat a little bit for for the past few days at least. Uh, ever since it came out, uh, it's just a like Dum Dum by Red Velvet. It's kind of like it, it's 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 it has a lot going in it, going on in it, but it all really works well. And like Red Velvet can all really sing good. Like it yeah. has a really cool hip hop beat. The 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 verses they sing really kind of cool and soulfully and like they're they're like uh baby 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 it just like it catches you off guard because like whoa like it was a gospel singer like just belting out a note out there it's like uh but it it, it works really well and it it, it kind of jumps around and twists and turns and like does it but does it in a way that isn't uh it doesn't suck <laughs> Yeah, like like uh, I got a boy sucks. <laughs> like I got a boy is just a, a lot of ideas that don't work. This is a lot of ideas put together really well that do work, and and I yeah. have to say uh, that's why it's just been like I've been jamming to this so much, so much. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I definitely agree. Like I, I'm gonna be jamming to this for a while. Like I enjoy the fuck out of this. It's so good. Yeah, and if you ca- if you catch like the the choreography like on the music shows or like their dance practices, it's cool. Like the whole like especially during like the dum 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 like the chorus, like there's a lot of parts that are work really well. And there's a part where they just they produce a slap bracelet and start using it like a ruler, and like mm-hmm. it's part of the choreography. And then like this like you don't realize this. It's like suddenly they have this thing that looks like a ruler, and suddenly they do this quick motion and it disappears. You only realize it later is that they slap the bracelet back on. It's like, and, mm-hmm. it, but it do it in such a smooth motion on on the beat. Like there it is, th- that slap bracelet right there. Yeah. Uh, and then they do it on, s- on such a smooth motion on the beat that it just kind of it disappears. It's like a little like yeah. Because you choreo. see them like using it to like kind of do that, and then they just like and it's gone, and you're like, what? Such a simple thing, but <laughs> it works so well in the choreography and like the you know, yeah, on the ball and catching it. There, there's so much more like to the choreography that the music video doesn't show and you don't get to see, which I think is the only knock on on the the music video is that you don't see as much as a chore- of the choreography. That but the that's lock? not. I, I said lock, but isn't that the knock on almost any music video though? Exactly. It's like, yeah, and that's sometimes like. Uh, it, it, it's cool to have all the visuals and maybe tell a story or or have these fun, cool, crazy concepts in a video sometimes. But then there are songs that have really amazing fucking choreography and they just don't get shown off because it gets so wrapped up in like yeah. the mix of, of fucking weirdness that is whatever the director or the art director had in mind, you know, yeah. like. 2 p.m.'s heartbeat is one of those songs that has really cool choreography, but it's shown off really well with the video, you know? Yeah. Well, that's uh, why you have the choreography version to get yeah. more views. You get, but I, I, you I, get I a think, double dip on the YouTube views. <laughs> I, I think we've also it hit a point in like kind of the Korean pop music culture thing where it's okay to have this really weird video because I think they're trying to kind of bank on like the Kiari Pamu Pamu type of style of things and then have the dance practice video or have the dance version of the video you know and like yeah you're banking on the the views but back in a time back in a time with us to forget Korean pop videos were usually all about the choreography which is what initially made them really popular you know yeah. Like we're these crazy dance routines and stuff like that that a lot of groups were known for, as opposed to the the beats and the singing and things like that and the really fun songs. But I don't know, it it, it just is something that has crossed my mind lately, it, yeah. with where we're going with the super hyper colored videos. Yeah, uh, it's definitely kind of an interesting the thing to think about as I wait for this ad to to <laughs> this YouTube ad. Uh, but yeah, like this is a great example. This is the choreography on on the video. Um, let's skip ahead to the you know the kind of the you know the the Michael Jackson, and then you kind of have to it, it's it's the moment you have to f- spot where they grab the bracelet. It's like it's almost kind of like you you play it's like fruit fruit fruit, and it's later on. It's when they go on the ground. 
But yes. But yeah. Uh, moving on though. To your last track. My last Trizak on the his house is from the boys from Icon. Mm-hmm. Those Icon the boys. Um, it's it's called my type. Uh, and it, I don't know. It's just a really simple. It's a really simple concept of video. It's oh that girl's hot. She's my type, and it's just the boys singing, and <laughs> like <laughs> it, it, there's not a lot to talk about. Uh, yeah. It's a it's a pretty cute video though. Yeah, um, I like this song. It's not it's not the it's not terrible. It's not the greatest a, thing in the world, but it's not terrible. It's kind of like it's it's a it's a little safe. Like <laughs> uh, it's it's a nice little war. It, it, what it is, it's a warm up single. As we discussed it with the schedule, it's it's that time on the schedule. They're doing the warm ups. This is them doing their yeah. shoot arounds. <laughs> this is uh, this is their this is the single that counts as their shoot arounds. Uh, and it's you know it, it, yeah it's simple and it's it's safe so it's like cool. Uh, I can't yeah. say that I'm enthused. But yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not the greatest song ever, especially for coming out of YG. It's kind of very like, I, uh, they they've kind of gotten a lot of tame with their their stylings for the boy groups, you know. Yeah, like Winter is kind of tame in some of their style of songs, and Icon is it, it's like just a visualization of the same thing, you know. Yeah, and then you have two twenty one. While we still have two twenty one, and Big Bang, you know, which yeah. is so much more high paced. Like I want to hear a high paced song from them because yeah. it's what I like from YG. Yeah, I think it, it's it's it goes back to kind of being more of a. I'm just, I'm just gonna say it, that more of a basic boy group, like and and and. You know, it takes a lot to win me over as a boy group. <laughs> Granted, they don't care about winning me over, so that's okay for them. But, uh, but it takes a lot for me to get really into a boy group uh, because a lot of them are boring <laughs> and, and basic uh, because they don't have to, at least musically, they don't have to try as hard. Uh, you know, because the 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 the, the fan girls like the pretty Korean boys and all they got to be is pretty Korean and, and can dance good. Um, and, and they'll have the fangirls. Uh, so I don't know. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah. it's a warm up single. It's a, it's a warm up. So I, I'm, 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 I'm excited to hear more from them. Cause I, I enjoy Bobby, uh, and I, I kind of want to see what Icon's going to show me. Um, they they seem to mix really well, uh, which is always a good thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, so hopefully we'll 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 get some of their own flavor, not the flavor that was handed to them by their producers. Yes. <laughs> you know, like because that's what you really have to wait for. You know, you have to like the, those first couple of singles that you get from any group are going to be the ones that they were told to work on, and then yeah. at some point you get the one that has their own flavor in it. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe sometimes. Uh, but yeah, it, I, well, I'll look forward to hopefully seeing them grow and and evolve a little bit. Uh, but that'll be to the future. Uh, speaking of show me the money, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a song that I, I guess I preemptive I I I undercut you. In the, before you got to, uh, because you had filled up your your list, and I thought, well, I, I guess he didn't see it, so I was like, <laughs> uh, I but, didn't see it. I hadn't looked yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vasco with his, I think it, it just released a few days ago, uh, with his track "Whoa Ha," uh, which I ended up not only enjoying the song but the video as well, because it's just like it's it's simply shot. But uh, done well. Uh, also, got all of the the very obvious uh, monster energy drink product placement. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna talk about that as soon as I saw it. I was like, oh, all right, sponsored by Monster. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but it, it is it's Vasco style. Uh, if you've seen you know Vasco, if you've seen Show Me the Money, if you've seen his mu- other music videos. You see his his style. 
but it, it, it's very confrontational and in your face and uh but i think with a with a skill to 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 back it up uh it, it's not this isn't your 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 little kids uh your little brother's trap beat you know uh hip hop yeah. style this is a little more like yeah controversial hard but not but but actually with a construct in uh, well, that's what I've always liked about Vosco's style. Is it's, it's kind of controversial, hard. It, it has that flavor to it, but it's still really well laid out, you know. And and I love his flow. His flow is really, really interesting and cool. Yeah. Uh, also, it has a lot of fun cameos, including Black Nut, including like a bunch of yeah. his, uh, other, other rappers, including randomly Hyoyeon of Girls' Generation. <laughs> uh just in there just like at some point hyoyeon is there uh but yeah. it's like San- look, there there she is like okay uh <laughs> sani and zico and uh a couple of uh other dudes like it's just uh the daniel of uh uh un un what was it uh what's it called summit the uh, abnormal summit i think formerly of yeah. abnormal summit aka that dude from that show with the shit ton of tattoos you know uh if if you know that description you know the guy um but yeah like it just has a lot of crazy cameos but of like his 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 boys you know uh showing up yeah overall it's just a really cool kind of cool song and video yeah like at first i kind of saw like the concept for the video coming and i was just like hmm it's kind of, but then you you start seeing all the cameos and you're like, oh shit! And then you start listening to the beat and you're like, this is, I'm loving this, I'm yeah. feeling this. Also, I guarantee you, Hyoyeon's, uh more of a thug than half the other ones, and that's not even knock on the other, on on the other guys. She's just that thuggish. I'm just, I'm just throwing it <laughs> out there. She's just that thuggish. You you, you don't know about Hyoyeon. We we talked about it on the show. She yeah. she's. She lives. She's about that life. She she's got that thug life, uh, in her blood. Uh, she'll she'll murk some fools. Uh, but moving on. Uh, check out that new Basco mixtape. Moving on. Spinning yeah, them bars. Definitely. That's something I'm gonna tr- I want to try to get my hands on. Yeah. Uh, Mad Max. Uh, moving on to something else. Uh, I mean, we're gonna get a, a, we're gonna dip, dip into some Japanese stuff a little bit. Uh, first, it's speaking somebody of I just Ken- mentioned not too long ago. Caddy Pamu Pamu, <laughs> uh, with yeah. uh, Crazy Party Night, Pumpkins Strike Back, uh, kind of a Halloween track though. It's been it's like how long till Halloween? <laughs> like oh, we, got of, we got a while. We, we, we yeah, got a we got a month to seventeen days. Uh, she's already got her Halloween track out. Uh, Crazy Party Night. It's 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 a lot of what you expect of Caddy Pamu Pamu, but it's still a well done and and it's, it's a, this is a really cool song yeah. I, I liked it i uh, i fucking love this uh beginning with her as like a news reporter yeah <laughs> it's like it's so cute and funny it's a it's it's just a fun like it, it, it's what you what you want from a catty pommy pommy video to come up with something like a fun cute outfit and a new persona to kind of like uh to create for herself and you have these pastel colored zombies and like her running through this haunted house and like ah it's being all scared. Uh and then there's a point where she run she walks in a room with herself dancing in it. Mm-hmm. Uh and it, the 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 very obvious if you when she's in the front dancing in the background what's supposed to be her is just a person with a blank face in the wig she wears and it's kind of eerie and weird <laughs> like like Almost as to not have to like do any CGI, uh, but like I don't know, it's it just uh, the the dance is so it, it, the dance is fun, the song is fun, uh, so much of it is just kind of just fun, and I think that goes back to like why we why we love Caddy Pamu Pamu and why we made this show Hallyujuku as an excuse to mm-hmm. talk about Caddy Pamu Pamu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's just really well done. She's she's fucking cool. She's fucking like, she's such an amazing character. Like th- this character that she's created is so amazing and fun. And like, 
it, it, it it's kind of this thing of like I think in the the mythos of the world this is what people wanted from Lady Gaga, right? Yeah. They wanted her to just be this fun, cool character, but she kind of took it too far. Yeah. Whereas Kiri Pamu Pamu is this character, and that's what it is. It's the character, Kiri Pamu Pamu, you know? Like, she might live as that character. When you talk to her, she may always be that character, but that's what it is, you know what I'm saying? But it's not as far out as the lady gaga character is you know yeah yeah uh but i do there, there are definitely some parallels between the two in the sense that it's like yeah. you think there's just this pop construct and then you realize oh wait there's this creative force behind it and uh you learn to appreciate that uh yeah a lot of fun stuff uh the other uh, japanese offering i have is a group that uh that originally was brought to our attention by our mutual friend and mutual co-host of a you know different podcast DJM uh, by the mm. of the group uh, by the name of Radio, uh, but, and sure. their new song, which I think I'd originally looked up and found the translation. Oh, let me look. Let me look back at the doc. Uh, <laughs> uh, the song "Red Car Chase," uh, and it's. It's a it's a cool song. It, it is like that Bradio style, that like uh, rock and roll. This one, I believe, a little bit funkier. If I were, uh, a little funkier, a little bit different, but still like mm-hmm. still really. Cool. Like, this o- o- almost slightly into that bad rabbits realm. Yeah, just, yeah. just almost a little bit. There's just a little bit of that funk that yeah. you get, like like from bad rabbits where it's still really interesting and different but it's it's based in funk music you know funk and soul like, and like that stuff like specifically yeah. funk and like uh with that four on the floor disco you know it's like uh yeah it's just uh, done really well and like the song is catchy and the and the the videos you know they're not not elaborate but it, it serves a purpose it, it's just about the music it's about you know this band playing some tunes uh and there there is a video of you know (laughs) him driving his lady around uh there's a dude chasing him apparently uh but it's it's a it's a it's just a really cool song Uh, what what did you think Cass? i i I definitely thought the same i i enjoy bardio like they may have to go in a playlist for me with uh fucking bad rabbits because i would just love to hear these two bands back to back you know yeah like yeah like this is a this is good. this is just cool and funky and it just has a cool style to it it's so well done like uh i love hearing these kind of different styles i'm, I'm glad djm brought them to our attention and we really need i am you, too we we need like it, it's because like uh, we always want to be more aware of what's going on in japan uh but there's, you know, it is it is a much bigger country, and there's a lot more to grasp, and and I almost feel like we need a guide. So if anyone out there yeah. would like to guide us through through the world of J-pop and or Japanese pop music or any, all you know all the different genres, uh, reach out to us. Let us know some of the things we should check out. Who's making music out there that uh, we should be paying attention to? I mean, we've got a few groups that we, and singers that and you know, artists that we 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 know of, uh, but we're we're always we're always looking out for more because this we we've kind of been you know ch- cheating ourselves and kind of uh, shortchanging our own like name. <laughs> we've been doing a lot of the Hallyu, but not a lot of the Juku. You know? <laughs> we've had a lot of the Hallyu, not a lot of the Juku. So uh, if you if y'all can hook us up, please do so. Uh, we look forward to it. Hit us up. Howley Juku on Twitter. Or I'm PD Rave and he's King Cavs. You can see him under our cells. Just hit us up. Let us know. Yes. Um, yes. Last but not least, I wanted to kind of throw this you, last There's little more? Uh, yeah. There's more. Last but not least, just want to throw this little random one out. Uh, it's just uh, it's just this random uh, collaboration with our girls. What's up? Uh, producer Tala, or uh, I don't. There's like accents. I don't know if I'm missing it, mispronouncing it, but uh, Tala and another producer, Missing No, 
uh, you know, mm-hmm. Pokemon thing. Uh, with the song Tell Me featuring What's Up, I guess featuring What's Up on vocals with the, the yeah. aforementioned artist uh, to being the producers. Um, and it turned out to be this really kind of interesting song with the girls kind of providing vocals, a good chunk of it in English, some of it in Korean uh, with a nice rap verse from Nada. Uh, it just turned out to be this like oddly interesting, cool song. Like, uh, it it is um it's very reminiscent of of what I've noticed. Now I'm not the fucking I'm not a forethought person in this at all. But like, what's going on with like a lot of European house music lately? Where yeah. it's more of a m- collaboration mix now than it is a a just like a land grab of, of samples that it, that it was a few years ago where like now you kind of get an artist to do a vocal track for you and then you kind of make your mix around it yeah. with like a baseline beat but then you kind of but even though you have what is essentially a song they still take it and then reorganize it and regroup it and that's kind of how a lot of songs are now like there's a few with uh the lead singer from paramore that are like you know in house songs and stuff yeah like yeah it's just something that's really uh been a thing <laughs> uh with quite a few artists and it's kind of it's cool to see to your girls and what's up uh we, we you and I, I we've talked about our our love affair with what's up uh ever since the beginning with the 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 with their debut and them becoming the twerk idols and us like like i'm sure i'm rehashing what we've already talked about but like our our initial like the you know idols gonna twerk oh whatever and you know putting our hands you know (laughs) that's like we have these journeys on this show that like people could go back and send us shit and we'd just be like oh we did say that didn't we oh shit (laughs) yeah and like uh but yeah we ended up we ended up l- loving the the debut i think just because of how fun it was and for me because of uh if nothing else it's it was an accurate uh representation of what the music that originally spawned twerking that miami based mm-hmm. music so it's like uh and then they they, they grew from there and it just, just uh, i love seeing the the growth of of our girls who who I adore and I'm 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 hoping they're working on stuff for of you know what's up stuff proper. Uh, I'm really hoping. I, I know I noticed that a couple of them had new new hair colors, like new mm-hmm, specially mm-hmm. prepared hair colors and hairdos. So usually that maybe. means something. That means something. You know how, how weird that is that you could like you could look at K-pop and you're like holy shit. Did you see Two Any One has new hairstyles? And you're like, oh fuck, there must be a new album coming out. It yeah. could literally mean that there's a new album coming out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like they died, she dyed her hair. It's like because sure, sure, they sure as hell ain't gonna dye their hair for no reason. So it's like, uh, yeah. Like this is the pain of the ass. So it's like you know, she dyed her hair. Oh, here comes that comeback. Um, uh, <laughs> that being said. <laughs> That's what was new this week. Uh, yeah. Go check those uh, stuff out. Uh, now we head on over, transition over to our headlines. Let's talk about what's going on in the world of East Asian pop culture. What is going on in the lines that have heads on them? Mm-hmm. Join us. Uh, no, Yes, that was the right button. Uh, now we're here on our headline <laughs> segment. Uh, we still fuck. We still forgot to get like fucking papers to shuffle and shit. What is yes. on my screen? Oh no, that's curly screen. Jesus Christ! Don't do that to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, we're talking about some of the I, world of East Asian pop culture. Thought I had pixels. <laughs> I was gonna cry, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. All right, headlines. Woo! Headlines. I'm ready. All right, let's talk about some stuff. Uh, Chris features in Straight Out of Compton Beats campaign in Times Square. It's SME should right, just give up. I'm not ready anymore. No, <laughs> I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I'm to tired further, of the Straight Out of Compton. 
thing. Uh... <laughs> So that being said, straight to further solidify the reality that SM Entertainment's lawsuit isn't going to stop shit either way. Chris was recently spotted in Times Square with a newly shaved head as part of the Beat Straight Out of Compton advertising campaign. Uh, like when you see shit like this, don't like when you see shit like this, don't you just give up if you're SMA? Like who gives a shit? Even if you win, Chris is going to not star in Chinese movie and be in overseas ads. His career is basically carved out already, and his gamble on himself as an actor seems to have paid off in spades. Just give up, motherfucker. Uh, that's why I love Asian Nucky. Just, you know, straightforward. Uh, this is uh, two levels of weird. First of all, uh, seeing somebody from, uh, somebody like a, in used to be in K-pop in something as prominent as this, especially on Times Square. Uh, also, Chris shaved head. Weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just yeah, weird a little bit you, you know what's weirder to me is those last couple of pictures with fucking jimmy fallon's gross ass face just sitting there also i don't like jimmy fallon <laughs> just throwing that out um yeah and, uh, what's also great is the, the, the you know the comments straight out of exo right there God uh, damn it. also there's another one uh they caught it at just the right moment if you look right there, and then you look in that corner, stuck in a contract? <laughs> this is beautiful. Good team up, I hope you are. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, this is beautiful. Uh, but yeah, at this point, SME should just give up, right? SM Entertainment should just give up. There's no point. Um, yeah, they're just going to constantly make themselves look even worse and, and continue to look like the bad guys and all of this. So it's just one of those things, like, the more you push, the more, the more, like, I don't know. It's just, it's not going to turn out well for you. Yeah. It's not like, it's not like JYJ where you can block them, that they're going to be in your country and you can more or less have understanding with all the entertainment shows and TV channels that that uh, it's in their best interest to you know not have them on their TV shows uh, they have no demeanor it's like in China they'd be like yo you hold no power here you know it's, it's China they, they, they have no power there uh, it is not, you know they hold no dominion over there uh, at least not in the, se- in the same way that they do in Korea um so it's like, you know, maybe they should just let it go. <laughs> like they did with Jessica. Just let them go. Uh, yeah. But of course they won't. <laughs> because they're SM. And they're petty. And they're childish. And uh, they're clingy. Like an ex-girlfriend. Um, that being said. Good luck to Chris. No, sure. definitely. Like... It- I, I think it's one of those things I I feel like as much as we've kind of tr- somewhat tried to play devil's advocate in, in most of this, I feel like majority wise, I'm always on the side of the um, I'm always on the side of the artist, you know, yeah. um, for the most part. Uh, yeah. There are some special occasions that we've talked about some stories where the artist kind of sometimes is the bad guy, <laughs> but. The, For the majority, it's usually the record label. Yeah. Oh, I will say, I'm going to throw in a little extra headline just because it's a, a nice little extra aside because it's, it's a funny moment. Uh, Chris asked about Tao, Tao by journalist. Chris does his best. I don't know her. Uh, <laughs> you, you don't have this headline because I forgot. To, I, didn't, I didn't end up putting it in the doc, but I was just like, all right, let, you know, we, we got through that quick. Let's talk about this too. Uh, Chris was recently asked about uh, asked by a journalist at a press conference whether he still keeps in touch with former XL group member Tal. Chris's response? Well, it's in this GIF. Like, uh, <laughs> and you can see right there. It's just a... Mm. Uh, nah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah. Like, who Tao? No. We are, we are all blessed to be living in this era. Uh, <laughs> by the way, in that article, and I'm going to make sure to include it in the thing, is the original Mariah Carey, I don't know her clip, which is kind of hilarious and dumb, but kind of hilarious in its sassiness. Uh, but moving on from that drama, uh, as SM won't, won't do. <laughs> Uh, rapper Swings, our boy, 
announces he was discharged early from the army for mental health reasons. Uh, <laughs> rapper Swings has posted on his Facebook to let fans know that he has been discharged from the military due to mental health issues. On, on September 11th, Swings posted on his Facebook that on September 4th, after a review of his fitness for duty as an active soldier, he was discharged from the army with 11 months left in his mandatory service. He writes, I've been receiving treatments since I was young for various mental illnesses, such as obsessive compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, major depression, bipolar disorder. Uh, and that's the main one right there. All those mental is health issues became worse when I'm under stress. I was taking medicine in the training center and I was going through mood swings. Uh, I'd spiral downward. Uh, and get very depressed, then go through a period of a high when I felt where I felt elated, and then started crying again. Swings uh, continued as things got worse. My dosage of medication increased, and for a few months I couldn't do anything. I basically just stepped. Uh, being discharged would be a blow to my pride, so I suffered through it. But in the end, following the recommendations of my officers, I applied to be considered as unfit for duty. I uh, will focus solely on my treatment for the remaining period of my military service, and not engage in any work for profit. Thank you. See you next year. Um, this is as, as, as much as your reaction for the, 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 like swings having mood swings, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't like of all the things, right. That fucking hit me out of nowhere. I, yeah. it, like you gotta sometimes give me a minute. Like there, there are just, there, there are some things that are just going to fucking catch me off guard. And that one caught me off guard. Yes. Right. So like, uh, but that being said, right. I, I, I like the the idea of him, uh, especially you know in this situation, uh, may you know putting his own mental health uh, first, especially when he was you know he could have even after this kind of gone back to music and gone back to work, but he decided to uh, just yeah. take the time to 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 work on his mental health. Uh, I don't know, well, what's your impression, Kaz? Um, it, it, it swings has always seemed like a dude who is very um, emotions forward, you know. Yeah. Um, and he shows a lot of it in his music, and a lot of that emotion and shit is poured into his music. Um, and I definitely enjoy swings as a musician a lot. Uh, so I just hope that you know the treatments and then the medicine can at least keep him level because there's really not much you can do about some of those mental health issues uh because i know a lot of people who have had them and suffered from them and it's usually just treatment and a day um but you find a lot of them in music artists in artists, you know, and yeah. people like that, people who can express themselves in these mediums, um, but maybe not be able to get along in day-to-day efforts. And something like the army could be very stressful. Um, even though, even if yeah. it's not active duty, that, it's a stressful lifestyle um, yeah, of the training who, and the regiments. And, who are normally very just uh, in good mental health have trouble, you know, mm-hmm. In, in military yeah. and in whatever go- is going on in Korean military, like, uh, it just can be a stressful time and a stressful yeah. experience uh, to expound yeah, no, on top then, of mental health issues. For, and then and there are going to be those people who are like, oh, you know, all of a sudden he has this issue. And it's it could be an issue that has always well, it is, been it is. around and always yeah, it is. been He's, there. Yeah, he talks about how he's been there since he was a kid. You know. like he's always had issues yeah. of, of you know depression or you know a bipolar disorder uh, since he was young. So and it's just something that he's yeah. had to deal with, and then it gets but, worse under stress. Being put in that very stressful situation, yeah, can can really really you know make it worse because I've, I've had to deal with those things myself like it's one of the reasons i don't do good in like school and shit like classrooms <laughs> freak me the fuck out <laughs> you know but it, it all in all like i just i just want swings to get better because like dude i want more swings you know yeah. like of all the things that i love in korean rap swings has always been a thing that i've definitely enjoyed um coming into it so 
more swings and and swings getting better and getting back to doing the things that he loves is what everyone's waiting for. Mm-hmm. I, know, I know that's what I'm waiting for. So yeah, I wish him all the luck. I'm 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 glad he's gonna try to stick it out as much as he can because that just seems like the type of guy that swings is anyway. Yeah. Um, but I just want him to do what's gonna be best for him. Yeah. Uh we wish him luck. S- swings, I think. Uh, moving on. Somebody so little to less cool people. Uh, she <laughs> won unsurprisingly backs the martyr for idiots Kim Davis on same sex marriage. Uh, this is uh, in what is perhaps the least surprising news of the year. Super Junior She Won uh, recently retweeted defenses in support of Kentucky County Clerk Kim Davis, who refused to issue marriage license for same sex couple same sex couples in defiance of a Supreme Court ruling that legalized same sex marriage in uh, America. He, he yes. retweeted these couple of tweets, especially like. Bible verses and you know praise for Kim Davis and uh, why unsurprising? Uh, well, I mean he said this years ago about homosexuals and gender roles. Uh, when asked how he feels about male actors portraying sexually ambiguous roles, Choi, uh, who acknowledged himself as a convert conservative and devout Christian, answered, "I will respectfully refuse any offers. While we respect, I while I respect all genders." I do not wish to acknowledge homosexuals as I have been taught that God created man and woman with specific characteristics and duties. <laughs> uh, agreed, Shuan. You, you shouldn't portray uh, sexually ambiguous and character in public because what about the kids? Yeah. Well, you know, sexual <laughs> ambiguity. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, totally. Um, there was that, and then of course, uh, quickly upon you know a few days later, she won apologizes for anti same sex marriage tweets after SME SM Entertainment yelled at him probably. Uh, she won recently released an apology for his Twitter shenanigans the other day while he did, which he did supposedly because he gotta gotta hear both sides or something. Uh, anyway, his apology sounded like it was crafted by SM Entertainment after they presumably yelled at him about brands and stock prices and the demographics of his fan base. Uh, if it was, if this was the only time he and his dad have expressed future opinions, then I, you know, it would be a mistake. Yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, it's, it was obvious he was yelled at and he had to apologize and in English because that's the only fan base that really was, you know, worked up. I don't know. What, what, yeah, because probably the Koreans didn't even really understand what, we're going, what was going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're just like, the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I, 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 like I, that's, ah, damn it. This is why we need, like, Korean friends so we can just have that understanding of, like, do you understand this story and why, he, like, why him tweeting about that was bad? And then it would just be like, I didn't know what the fuck he was tweeting about. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was Googling shit and I'm just like, what is he talking neighbor. about? <laughs> I was on Naver hey. and shit. I was like, I hope we're doing you know what? Uh, what is a Kim Davis? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh man. Um, yeah. Korean I don't friends, know. you it's don't the, need to know. <laughs> for me, it's 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 silly. I understand everybody has their opinions on things, and I am one of those people that, even though I myself am a very like open-minded individual with a lot of things, sexuality, and all kinds of other things, I can understand why some people are closed-minded. It's just the way they are raised. It's just who they are, and it's just what you do. Um, and I feel like, as as, as much as no-mindedness is like. At, at a certain point has no place in this world anymore and people should learn to be just a little bit more open-minded i've i've always kind of been the type of person who's like man your bag is your bag you know and you don't have to agree with any, everything but but when you're in the public eye um a lot of the times sometimes you gotta kind of keep your personal shit to yourself um And as much as that dehumanizes someone to say that, like to say like your your thoughts and and understanding of things should not be said, um, you gotta you gotta really pick and choose those things sometimes, you know, like, and 
I'm not saying him being a religious person and, and thinking that homosexuality is wrong is bad, but you really got to pick and choose your battles when it comes to straight up law yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and human rights, you know, like yeah. there are some things that no matter what should be basic human rights, whether you agree with the person who you're given the, those rights to or not. Yeah. Um, but there are yeah. some things that are just basic human rights. Yeah, like a good like like a good night's rest and a square meals and being able to work uh, without being stressed the hell out, uh, like they are in Korean dramas. First good segue of the night. First good segue of the episode. Uh, will Korean dramas break away from the live shoot system? Uh, this is on K-pop Herald. Uh, through making a TV series is considered a laborious endeavor in most parts of the world. The shooting of Korean dramas in particular has gained notoriety for, for, he, for its hectic filming schedule, harsh conditions, and last-minute script changes. Uh, the currently fil- running JTC series, JTBC series, they wrote it wrong, last is the exception. Going to the pre-shooting route, you know, shooting it ahead of time. Not that week. Uh, actors from the series uh, in the production uh, still a rare practice in the production of TV dramas in Korea. Uh, actors from the series have admitted they could not be happier with their new work environment. The environment is superb, actor Yoon Kye Song said in a group interview on set in Ansong, Gyeonggi Province on Monday. The scripts are out early, so the actors have enough time to delve into their characters. Uh, Yoon's favorable comment on the production system is surprising considering Korean actors and actresses often complain about their harsh filming environments. Uh, co-star actress Pak Yeo Jin uh, agreed with Yoon. Uh, I've learned what it feels like to work on a project that is well prepared and reasonably scheduled, she said. Most of the times when working on other shows, I've been clenching my teeth to get through the shoots with no idea what I'm doing. I didn't know shooting a drama series could be this great. Uh, the majority of Korean dramas are produced in what has been called a semi-live show format, with episodes being scripted, shot, and edited mere days before their airing. Uh, practices mm-hmm. undoubtedly alien to the U.S. and U.K. Yeah, yeah I imagine y'all are thinking, like, what? Uh, where entire seasons are produced a few months to a year before the, their broadcast. Uh, in the hectic schedule, actors confess they find it hard to focus on their characters. Uh, we weren't rushing through shoots, and we were weren't rushing through shoots and sacrificing quality when filming last, as happens in most drama projects. Said actor Lee Bum Su, uh, the scripts for the first episodes were already out from the start. These comments are in stark contrast with common depictions of Korean drama shoots. Only last month, actor Jung Woon Yin described the conditions on the, on the set of SBS drama Young Pal as quote the worst end quote. <laughs> um. And goes on and on, and I think uh, the reasons. All right, yeah, the reasons behind the tight Korean shooting schedule. Some reports say lie in the desired flexibility to respond to viewer feedback, because the process of shooting and airing simultaneously allows for writers to change storylines according to viewer preferences. It ultimately results in better ratings and profits to, for the show. They say, uh, they believe. Uh, because you know when you you've been doing something for so long, it's better than doing things a uh, a new way. Uh, you know, status quo is better than new ideas. Um, and it goes on and on, giving more examples. It's it's like uh, it, and they they give more examples of a possibility of the changing of the tide of doing you know more of a how everyone else does it kind of a thing where you complete an idea, think of it yourself and have it planned well enough so that you're not stressed out and you're not, uh, yeah. clenching your teeth and, and I, you don't accidentally think- edit your highly, you know, edit your network television show wrong so that, uh, the visual of a scene repeats while the audio <laughs> plays normally young pal. Um, and I think the issue with that is I think Korea and Japan, as far as television and live action things go, is they got used to like maybe like they got used to movie schedules and variety shows, yeah. you know, um, and I think when it comes to dramas, especially for the Koreans, like they they want to do, like 
they try to keep everything so fresh, you know, like you'll very rarely have them film something and sit on it. Like if they're going to spend the time to create, you're usually going to see the benefit of that thing that they created, um, which is, I think, what they were used to for the longest time. Whereas us here in America, they'll fucking film something for years before you even see it, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. uh especially sometimes in TV as well. And there, there is a lot of TV shows that they just film that never make it to air for multiple reasons. Whereas if something goes through that process in Korea, if something goes through the process of hiring actors, hiring uh, cameramen, hiring script writers, it's because it is going to be seen. You, you very rarely have things that get filmed that you don't see as far as I know. But um, uh, the key thing is, though, does it have to see, be seen that Friday? Can it be seen? <laughs> right. That is that is the key the thing. Friday right? and we're, Saturday. We're, we're talking about we're talking about the American British concept where it's months and months or, out, or, or and, French or Brazilian or you know everywhere else in the world. For you, <laughs> everywhere else but Korea, they feel, they they give themselves enough ample time before it airs to on a proper pace film it film multiple takes, get the script out written and ready for the actors to read and memorize yeah. uh, so that when it's finally to aired, you know, it's, it's, it has time to be edited properly. Uh, you know, it has time to be, to be looked at. It, I, it's, I, it has to it's change. Rough. Yeah, it's, it's definitely rough. I, I, fucking I, 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 I understand what they think they want to do. Which is respond to beer feedback, but that's dumb. That's how you get basic ass shows. That's how you get basic shows. Uh, that's how you. It, so we're running, man. Yeah, that's like that's how you, that's how your show. That's how an interesting an idea for a show suddenly gets shifted back to basic uh, status quo. That's how we get so many of the same shows because you this you think oh everybody thinks it should go back to this. Well, it's okay. You you could try to go for a certain demographic for a certain show and, and key into that and, you know, have the advertisement work for that demographic that likes that type of show. Uh, yeah. and you could have a complete thought and just let the creator create. And some people, it, an idea can grow. That's how, and that's really how like a show like producer, the mm -hmm. first, if you remember the first two episodes were kind of an interesting show. I mean, if it was, it was derivative of like the office and parks and rec and whatever, but, to do that show, but for Korean varieties, that would have been a cool show to just follow through on that idea with some, you know, a little bit of like dramedy aspects of it. But, you know, they that didn't immediately work or that didn't feel like it immediately worked. And they thought, whoa, let's get back to status quo. Let's just, so mm. they, they got the, they replaced the director and they went, it just became a, a basic Korean drama. And then sometimes they talked about one day, two days, one night, and did some fun jokes. It was good, like the writing was good, and a lot of the it was a lot of fun. But it just became ah, Kim Kim Soo Hyun has a crush on a girl, and it is playing the main character and has a crush on a girl, and thing and Korean drama and oh, yeah. well they won't they <laughs> yeah, um, it just kind of got basic, and that's it's like i understand what i think they want but then that that creates a lack of lack of creativity and lack of variety and uh and a lack of uh you know zeroing in on demographics and uh but I don't know. It, it i understand that and then but i understand all right that being said that being said, I understand that you know that we're gonna get some basic shows. We're gonna get the lo the the lowest common denominator, but yeah, given all that, if if it is just too it is just too hectic to try to re record four hours of network television drama of a single camera show in a few days and get it edited that uh, that soon like it is that's just too much work to to rush like that and 
I mean, I could get into the argument of why it should be, why I'm wondering why it has to be two episodes a week, but that's that's a whole other thing. Like, if, if you have, if you have, or whatever, if you have, if you have a Friday or Saturday show that goes on for twenty some for for thirteen weeks, can't you have a Friday show and a Saturday show that both go on for twenty one weeks? Whatever. Uh that being said, I don't. Know. I don't know. That being said, <sighs> I, don't I don't know. know. I, I I've I agree with you. I understand it. I, I but we're also from a different culture. Um, yeah. And but as it, silly as it seems, I I will agree. It seems very silly. You know, it's they they're hardworking people, and it's it's what they're used to in this weird way. And I just all the, I don't the, know. It, the, all the actors seem to are will have you know, all the actors seem to like it better. I imagine all the staff workers like it better when you have some planning and some some yeah. forethought and uh, definitely. Uh, so I mean, there are some ed, uh, dramas uh, coming up that are like Cheese and Trap. That it's also going to be on cable and Samdong, the her story uh, that are also going to be doing pre shoot. So. Uh, counting it to, to see whether the process will finally be able to, you know, g- gain some footing because it's gonna make for less less stressed out actors, uh, and less hectic filming schedules, and a little bit of a of a better better working conditions when it comes to being you know being of Korean dramas, uh, which I think will make for better quality. I think I think that's a yeah. I, I, if I were to, because I have been watching Young Paul, the show that's been mentioned in this show, I mean this article, um, and it really does seem all over the place. Like it is just kind of all over the place. There's a lot of things that just like, just seem so stitched together. Like, and the the aforementioned editing issue, where seriously on that show. They there was this, there was a part where suddenly like a scene was like like it shot ahead in time, uh, the video shot ahead in time, uh, to like a, a few seconds later, and then it jumped back and it was playing in real time. And it happened twice in like the same scene. It's like it, somebody mm-hmm. copy pasted the, the 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 wrong angle because they were doing it overnight, like trying to get it out that day, like yeah. Like that's just, uh, but I mean, there are we do have those like daytime. We, I mean, I wonder what the production schedule on a Days of Our Lives is. It's well, the thing is that, that they have uh, they only shoot well, they shoot one episode a day. It's all uh, multicam, a big part of it. Yeah, it's all multicam. So a lot of that is chances are it's live switched. A lot of that is live switched. Like, uh, yeah, I would assume so. Yeah, chances are it's probably all shot live to tape. Like, <laughs> uh, at least a good chunk of it, like live to tape. Like, uh, I mean, if we look it up, uh, American Daily Soap. Uh, filming schedule. What's a what's a soap opera shooting schedule like? Uh, rehearsal started in a, in a bland rehearsal room at 7 a.m. The shooting schedule then proceeds by set. All the scenes that play in a given set are shot as a group. A couple of run-throughs of the scene are done, mostly for cameramen and boom operators. Uh, on, uh, often they will try to shoot six days of episodes in five days, which allows them to take a week off uh, at Christmas and other times. Uh, I've heard recently they shoot even more episodes in order to go dark for longer periods, thereby getting cutting costs. Uh, they probably do it all ahead of time. They do mm-hmm. it daily, but like, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's let's see. Uh, uh it has to do with the insane schedules and like so they, instead of it being once a week so uh, we dk they're on a yeah uh, unless the mistake is bad there simply isn't time for a lot of retakes 
So there's mistakes on soap operas. So it's like, of course, this is a different. Yeah. You know, so we we have that, but yeah, because that 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 like that's the only thing I can think that would even compare. You know, like that's yeah. it. Is the, that's the only thing. But even that is is still less rigorous because it's so planned out. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I I want to see things improve because I think overall it's going to make for more more of a consistent output of good shows. Because right. yeah. the, the thing you made me think of when you said because all we end up with is the same story over and over again and like the same style is that's what uh, soap operas make me think of it's they're all the same style they're all constantly like the same storyline most soap operas rehash the same storyline just with different yeah. characters on a constant basis so like it's all i was thinking of and yeah, i mean like, like that's it but it's these weekly dramas as opposed to a daily drama you know yeah, like, like why are uh, you giving us that quality when you could give us something so much better like uh young paul could be such a much, such a better show like uh the premise was interesting i mean it's like this like surgeon you know skilled surgeon who moonlights for for gangsters as like you know somebody mm-hmm. who can stitch him up uh you know you know uh without asking questions or you know without having them have to go to hospitals or you know on the fly like almost like a a gangster uh combat medic you know <laughs> like uh somebody who can be on the scene of like a shootout or aftermath of a shootout and you know stitch people up and stuff like that uh that could make for an interesting premise and just kind of like it just kind of it got disjointed and weird and and kind of mishmashed and uh there there's there's good parts uh there's some parts that are just confusing and you know uh, some aspects of it and it's just it seems like it maybe they had more time and maybe if they didn't have the 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 deadline of you have to have everything at the end of this season uh i don't know like it's just it's it's one of those things where it's uh, gonna have to be like people trying things is we're gonna have to get them first penguins in the water diving into the water to see if there's uh sea lions or whales under there uh so that the other penguins will dive in as well uh yeah i don't know i just want my i want better shows so i don't feel like i have to like explain why why i i'm watching korean dramas (laughs) (laughs) Even though, even though yeah. I know I, I'm I'm the guy that takes the who gives a fuck what other people think approach, I, I want to at least be able to say like to somebody in the world that say you know I watch some Korean dramas. Hey, be there like, there are good ones. I know there are know that, exceptional but, ones. Yeah, but you know I want other people to realize that there are good ones and not just look at me like I'm silly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I always tell people the good ones first. That's how you. That's how you do it. <laughs> it's tough. I mean, I know. I know. Yeah. I know our friend who have who I got to hang out with finally. Uh, who I want to give a shout out, uh, Michael Liu, a boy, uh, mm-hmm. who who used to hang out with all the time on the on the hangouts, uh, and we got to hang out with uh, at at Dragon Con, uh, and he says that he he tries to listen to the show. Uh, but because we spend so much uh, time on Korean stuff, he's he's like, ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. We just kind of our thing. Yeah, I did talk been, to him about it. We've been trying I did. to fix that. Yeah, <laughs> he did complain about Korean dramas no. as opposed to Japanese dramas, especially in his complaint. And once he kind of explained it, I realized he, he it was kind of legitimate. Is that Korean dramas are too long sometimes? <laughs> sometimes they spend like twenty three up ep- twenty four episodes doing what they could accomplish in half of that time, and like I was like, which is funny because we've always talked about sometimes how like they they're almost the right length. You know? Sometimes, and like sixteen yeah. is good. A lot of times, it really depends on the story, but a lot of times, like the sixteen yeah. episode shows. Or like right there, 
And I the yeah. the when I was sitting there listening to him, I thought about it and I realized, oh yeah, sometimes they're either the the problem is like there's like this that zone where like they're either too long or they're at the same time and this is weird to say, too long or too short and, and too short. They're in that like it it's like it's one season, so they can't like flex their muscles and breathe and stretch out and build a world. But they have to fill out all these extra episodes that they sometimes there's a lot of filler and there's a lot of like, you know, shut, uh, hurry up and wait <laughs> moments in some of the storytelling in some Korean dramas. So yeah, it's like, you know, the the ones that are like 16 episodes are just around the right size, especially especially if they can plan them out properly. If they weren't just like jumping around trying to fill episodes and then trying to react to your feedback so it's definitely an interesting idea and he, he he brought up the idea that you know usually japanese dramas are a little bit more on the ball of like mm. pace wise uh at least from we might have experience. to get him to suggest some japanese dramas to us so we could yeah. like get a editor on that maybe do some new how you could talks with with japanese dramas yeah. at the forefront yeah so get our first uh, get some uh, impressions uh mm-hmm so yeah that, that will be a plan going forward uh i just want better i just want better content oh <laughs> uh, yeah not everything sense. can be my my lovely samsung and and for a shop of coffee prints yeah. or my love from another star or uh or uh uh it's okay that's love I don't know can do that. <laughs> I still haven't watched that one. I got to watch that one. Yeah. And that's another show that was well planned out. Like, that was, I remember the headline of, like, they had, like, eight episodes written and planned out, like, after, at, right at the beginning. And they, they were way ahead of the, the curve. And it turned out to be a fantastic show. Not a, not a very well watched show, but, <laughs> but a very good show. Which I guess is. Mm hmm. Which I guess is really breaks it down. Uh, that being said, before we, we, we ramble on anymore, that brings us to the end of another fantastic episode of Hali Juku. Uh, that and, does. Yeah. Uh, Kath, mm -hmm. what you got going on in your neck of the woods? Um, The DKG, the Drunk Kids Gaming YouTube channel. Go like and subscribe it or whatever the fuck you do on youtube i'm gonna start <laughs> reducing a lot of content for it uh we're just kind of hashing out ideas and styles of things and stuff like that so that's kind of our new our new or my new push for the thing i want everybody to kind of have their eyes on who are friends of ours and tell other people about and do all those kinds of things uh because i like making content and i'm, I'm trying to like legitimately get into a full content stream like like really solidify these things yeah. and stop having half ideas <laughs> yeah um yeah i will look forward to that check it out on the youtube and on twitch as well uh twitch.tv drunk kids gaming do the thing uh yeah he's about dot me slash kinkasm about dot me slash pd rave uh mm -hmm. we are halijuku you can find us on Hallyjuku.com, kpoppodcast.com, uh, Hallyjuku everywhere on the internet, iTunes, Stitcher, Rebelli TV on YouTube, Rebelli.net for this and other shows. Uh, well, didn't they tell you? Don't you know? I was waiting for that. Uh, <laughs> check us out. Like us, subscribe, share, uh, let people know about us. Until next time, hasta los huevos. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>